Hello there, ROS developers, and welcome to the day two of the Learn to Debug ROS Code Week. So today we are going to be debugging a service, a service server and a service client, and checking some errors, typical errors that you might find, and solving them. So if you are interested, stay with me. See you now. Let's go. So hello there, as I've just said, welcome to the day two of this Learn to Debug Ross Code week. So today we are going to be talking and discussing and debugging a Ross service, yes? So we are going to have a Ross, uh, a service server and a service client, and we are going to be debugging and seeing what are typical errors that you can find and how to solve them. So yeah, welcome everybody. I hope everything is going fine. Let me have a quick look at the chat to confirm that you can hear me and see me properly. So let me know in the chat if, if everything is fine so that I can keep going. Okay, I can see here my colleagues already are here in the chat, giving you a hand. Thanks a lot for this session during these critical times. You're welcome. It's our pleasure. All good, hello, ready to rose. Okay, so apparently everything is going fine, so let's just start. So, as always, I'm going to start by sharing with you uh, the project. Yeah, I'm going to put it here in the chat, so give me just one second so that I can do this. Hopefully everything is going to be fine. Yesterday we had a strange issue with some users that weren't able to copy properly their project. So let me come here, grab the project for day two. There we go. And I'm going to paste it to the chat here a couple of times. There we go. All good, all good, everything is fine. Ready to ROS. Nice, Lucas, that's the attitude. <laughs> it's good to me. Okay, so I have just shared here the ROS yet. So as always, I'm going to switch right now to the to my ROS development studio screen. Yeah, in order to start everything. So as always, remember, let's come to the ROS development studio right here. Yes, paste well, first of all, login. If you already have an account, login. If you don't have an account, just create it. It's free. Uh, in 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 ten seconds, you can have the account created. Yeah. Then once you are here in your workspace, you paste the URL that I have just sent you, or you click on the URL, whatever it whatever it will work, and then you are going to have the project here in your workspace. Yes. So let me come here. Refresh this, I should have it somewhere here. And you are going to receive here, get this day two project, yes? Then once you have this, all you have to do is to click on the open button and open project, yes? This is going to open the project in your, in your ROS development studio, yes? So I'm going to do this right now. And meanwhile, mean, uh, meanwhile, my project loads, I want, I want you to remember and encourage you if you are not already there here in the ROS development studio. Now, uh, when it loads, I will show it to you. Here in the ROS development studio, at the uh, bottom right corner, you have this ROS study group, which you can click here. And this is going to take you to our Discord. Yes? So. Here you are going to be able to, to talk with many colleagues that are here in our Discord server, many people which is interested here in, in, 
in in ROS, many attendance to live classes, to these training weeks. You can discuss about uh, different ROS topics, even your own uh, projects, or just have a, a random chat about anything you like. Yeah. So we have already many many users. So yeah, if uh, if you want to join a big community, a big ROS community, uh, just come here to the to our Discord server. Yeah. And you will find many, many people interested in ROS as well and eager to learn ROS as probably you are. So yeah, this being said, let me uh, have a quick look here at the chat to see if everybody is uh, doing good. Loading, okay. So I don't see any message, so. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, I, I guess everything is working, ready to start, loading, loading, so no problem with the project. Everybody has the project. Uh, excellent. So again, I want to remember all of you, please don't uh, stay there in your computer just listening to what I say uh, and to my beautiful voice. Please don't. Just get the project as, as I have just explained to you. Get the project, open it, and meanwhile, I'm going to be working and explaining things you have to be doing the same with me, yes? So all of us are going to be practicing at, that, at the same time all these ROS concepts that we are going to, to see today. And this is the way that you are going to really learn, yes? Because by just uh, listening to me, you are not really going to learn, yes? So the way to learn is to practice, to experience what you are doing, yep? All right, so let me... Come back here to my project window. There we go. Yes, so once the project is loaded, you are going to have something similar to this. Yes, you are going to have here automatically opened the, the notebook, the Jupyter notebook with the instructions for today, with the notebook for today, which we are going to see right now. Yeah, so this is the point I want you to all be here with the project opened. Yes, then once we are here, first of all, here we have some uh, requirements in order to follow this, this class. Yeah, so basically the requirements would be Linux and Python. Yeah, so you have to have some minimum knowledge of, of Linux, Linux shell, Linux uh, shell commands, and also Python. Yes, because we are going to be working in ROS with Python. Then for this, the best way to, to achieve this knowledge, if you don't have it, is to check our free online courses. Yes, these are courses that we have in our academy that we have created and that are completely free. Yes, so you have them here, the details, if you want to see all the units, etc. Here you have both courses, as you can see, they are free. So if you don't, if you don't have this knowledge and you want to learn more about Linux and Python, go ahead and check out this course and, co and complete them. And also, if you complete these courses, you are going to have the possibility here to complete this uh, code foundation for ROS path, which is composed by the Python and Linux courses. And then you're going to be able to do an exam, which will test your knowledge about uh, Python and Linux. And if you pass it, you're going to be able to get a certificate. Yes. So yeah, pretty interesting, right? Then this being said, Another possible, another possible requirement for this one, although it's not mandatory, would be the ROS Basics course. Yes, but this is going to be pretty, uh, it's not going to be very complicated. Yes, but basically we're going to be working with services, which you can learn here in the ROS Basics in 5 days course, but I'm going to comment it later. Yes, the, the requisites really are uh, these two and a basic, basic knowledge of ROS. Then this is a project, so this I have here is a project. If you don't know, if this is the first time you are with us, uh, just know that this is basically a ROS project, a self-contained ROS project. You have everything here, all ROS already installed. You have uh, the possibility to, to access notebooks or create them. You have also uh, the poss possibility to start simulations with different robots, etc. Yes. So basically, uh, this is a project. And the most powerful thing, in my opinion, of this project is that whenever you have created your project and saved it, you can share it with anyone, anybody you want 
with a simple URL, uh, as I have just done at the beginning of the class. Yes? And then by sharing this URL, anybody is going to be able to access the same project that you are working on with the same setup from anywhere. Yes? So if you want to learn more about Rosjet and how to create them, you can check these links. And then we are going to start right now by setting up our environment for this class. So we are going to, to be working with the Husky robot by ClearPath. And the first thing we are going to do is to, sorry, is to start the simulation here, yeah, the Gazebo simulation. So for this, we need to come here to the simulation menu at the top bar in the in your ROS development studio. Here, then you click on the choose launch file button, and this is going to give you a list with many launch files, yes? Then from all these launch files, you have to search for this Husky launch package, which is here highlighted in, in black letters. And within this package, you need to select the debug underscore day two dot launch. Then you select this debug day two launch file, you click on the launch button, and this is going to automatically start the Gazebo simulation. Now, the Gazebo window is going to pop up, here we have it, and this is going to start a Gazebo simulation with our environment. Yes, which if, every, if, if everything goes properly, should be something similar to this here, yes? Here you have also the specifications, the name of the package, the name of the launch file you have to select, you have everything here. And as you can see here, my simulation is uh, almost loaded here. It's finishing loading, here we have it. So here I have my Husky robot within this environment, yes? And this is the point where I want you, uh, I want you all to be, yes? So with the notebook here opened, the simulation launched and ready to start the class, yes? So. Now I'm going to do a small pause to confirm and see that everything is fine. Everybody is on the same page as I am so that we can continue all together. Let me have a quick look here. Loaded, loaded, loaded. Hey, let me know here if everything is fine. You have everything, uh, the simulation loaded. James Hall, why can't you do this on real hardware? What do you mean, James? to do on real hardware. If you mean uh, to test code in real robots, we, you, you can do it. In fact, we have here, uh, in the Rosa Bellman Studio, we have here a button, which basically allows you to connect to a real robot. Yeah, so whenever you have your ROS code working, you can come here and uh, use this tool in order to transfer your code to the real robot and uh, test it. So test everything on a real robot. All right, uh, Husky loaded, ready with simulation, loaded. Okay, excellent. So everything, everybody is on the same page. Let me just do a small, as I, as I always do before starting with the hard work, I'm going to get a drink here in my Rust developers uh, cup because it gives me really the, the energy I need in order to continue with the class. So. Cheers you all. Excellent. So let's continue with the class. Then here we have the simulation, here we have the notebook. So what are we going to do? So basically here we have the description of the problem to solve, the scenario we are going to be working with. Then first of all, it says this project contains one package inside its cutting workspace, which is named debug underscore day two. Then, okay. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to open an IDE in order to be able to visualize here my files. What do I have here in my workspaces? So here I have my IDE, here I have all the workspaces I have available. And here inside the Kacking workspace, if I open this source folder, I can see here a ROS package, which is named debug day two. Yes, so, so far so good, this is uh, fine. Then this package contains a couple of Python scripts getPostServer.py and getPostClient.py. So let me check this here inside the SRC folder. I have the getPostClient.py get and getPostServer.py. Excellent. So here I have the code for my service server and my service client. Then the main purpose of this service is to be able to get the post position and orientation of the Husky robot when called. Then in order to get the post of the robot, all you have to do is the following. So first, we source our Catkin workspace so that we have access to this package. 
then we are going to run with this command we are going to start the service server then with this second command we can run the client which will connect to the service server and then if everything goes fine I should get here an output like this one yes showing me the position and orientation of the robot at that uh, specific time yes all right so this is the scenario which uh, I am going to be working uh, with so the first thing I'm going to do now is to test it to test if this works or it doesn't work so let me come here and open a new shell a new web shell a Linux shell so here let me come to the notebook and copy paste these commands so first of all I'm going to source my calcing workspace in order to update all the packages I have within it excellent then I'm going to start here the server with this command so let me do this right now and this is not working okay so first of all the first command is not working I can see here an error message which says no module named debug day 2srv yes which concretely it's in the line 4 this is telling me yes so in my line 4 I'm having here an error I'm trying to import something yes which is giving me an error so let me open right now the file and start checking this so the file of the error as it's uh, stated here it's get post server.py so I'm going to open this Python script and I can see in line in line number four here here is where I'm having the error yes because I can know this from this message here then here basically what I'm doing is from this package from the debug day to package I'm trying to import a service message which is inside this SRB folder which is named get pose yes so here I'm trying to import this get pose service message then this is not working for some reason yes so what do you think why this is not working why am I am not being able to import this message or what would you do right now in order to 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 see what this error means why I'm getting this error so let me know what do you think let me know in the chat I am going to read you and see what do you think all right Engineering Nation says, I don't see any file named debug day 2 SRB. Yes, engineering, uh, the file is here. So inside the package, inside the debug day 2 package, you have an, a folder which is named SRV. SRV. Yes, and inside this SRV folder, you have this getpost.srv file, which contains the message definition, the service message definition. You have it here. Okay, I can see here already your comments. Service message consists of two parts. Yeah, that's right, Yehor. A service message consists of two parts. Should we mention the folder name also? It is already mentioned, Sandis. Here, if you check here the line, it's saying debugday2.srv. This SRV is mentioning this folder, this SRV folder. So it is already mentioned here. Let me keep checking. A get post package is missing no things are not uh, that, that is not the error get post it's not a package it's a message yes also you have to compile service message okay this is this is getting uh, closer yes so yehor semenyaka here says you have to compile the service message yeah so in order to be able to use this custom message i have to have it compiled yes so this is the first thing and I don't know right now if it's compiled or not yeah so what I can do now is to try to compile it right because otherwise I'm not going to be able to use this message yes 
the first requisite is to have this message compiled. Yes, if it's not compiled, I'm not going to be able to use it. Then what I'm going to do right now is to compile it, try to compile it and see, check if this is compiled or not. So for this, I'm going to come inside my catkin workspace and I'm going to execute the catkin make command. Yes, let me make this shell a bit bigger if I can. Well, let's leave it like this. Okay, so here inside the catkin workspace, I'm going to execute the catkin make command. Yes, then this, if everything is fine, should generate here my message, my service message. So let's execute here the catkin make. Well, let me do one thing. In fact, let me remove from here the build and develop folders to start from a clean workspace. And now I'm going to compile catkin make. There we go. This is starting the compilation. And let's see what happens here. All right. Do you think it's going to work? It's going to compile? Yes, no. Hmm. Oh, no, it's not compiling. So we are having an error here. Yes. All right. So let's check here the report. So here it says uh, it's a CMake error. So this already gives us some hints and it says could not find message which get post SRV depends on. Yes. So this get post SRV message, this get post service message I have here, I want to use. It depends on other message and in when I try to compile it, I am not being able to find this message. Then here it says also, did you, did you forget to specify generate messages dependencies? So here is already giving me another hint. Yes, maybe there is something in the generate messages function here, which by the way, it's inside the CMake list file. I'm going to show it to you now. So maybe there's something missing here. Yeah, this is another hint. Then yet another hint, cannot locate message post unknown package, geometry messages on search. So here it's already specifying me a, a, a package, which is this one geometry messages, which is not being able to find. Yes, it's not being able to find this geometry messages package. Yes. Finally here already also it's giving me another uh, hint, which is from my package, the semiglis.txt file, line 71 in generate messages. Yes. So from this message, I can know that first, the error is in the semiglis.txt file of my package, which is here. Yes, here I have the semiglis file. So I'm going to open this file because I, 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 I'm going to review it right now. Then within this file in line 71 if i come here to line 71 i can find here a generate messages function which maybe or probably the error could be related to this function yes the message is telling me all this information yes but also it's telling me that the error might have something to do with the with this geometry messages package. Yes. And with the get post SRV message, which depends on some package, then let me come here. Let me make this bigger. So with all this data I have, first of all, I'm going to check my service message. So as you can see, and also some of you already commented here in the chat, I seen is that a service message has two parts which are separated by the, by these three dashes here. Yes. Then the first part of the message, which is this one here, it's, is the request. And the second part, which is the one below the dashes, it's the response. Yes. Then the request in my service message is empty. So it has nothing. And the response, it's a post message, which depends on this geometry messages package. Yes. This post is a type of message. Yes. For instance, 
let me open another shell right here. And I can use the ROS message show command here in order to know more about this. So geometry messages pose. Then here I can see the structure of this post message. Yes, basically this post message contains a point with the position x, y, z and a quaternion with the orientation. Yes, and this is this is the post message. And this post message it's contained inside the geometry messages package. Yes? Then for the a request it's empty so I'm not going to worry about this yes so I'm going to leave it like this and the request it's an empty message then the response here it depends on the geometry messages package right then this makes total sense with my error message here yes which is says that my message depends on some package that it's not going to, it's not able to find. In this package, it's geometry messages, yes? So when I'm compiling, when I'm trying to compile this message, which depends on geometry messages package, I am not being able to find this geometry messages package. So in order to fix this, what I'm going to do, first of all, is to come here to the generate messages function, and as a dependency, I'm going to add here the geometry messages package yes all right so now my message generation is going to depend on standard messages which is the standard message library from ross for the most basic uh, messages like floats integers etc yes so this one you should always have it and then i'm going to add also the geometry messages package as a dependency yes then what I'm going to do now is to try to compile again. So I have done here the proper modifications and now I'm going to try to compile this again, executing one more time the catkin make package. Yep. All right. Then let's see what happens now. Let's see if now, if this time this works and it does not work. Okay, so this is still not working. Then let's go uh, one more time. Let's review this. So this is a CMake error, yes? So probably this error is going to be in the CMake lists package as well. And here it says, message depends on unknown package, geometry messages. Missing find package geometry messages. So here I have another clue. Here it says, maybe you have in this find package uh, function, you don't have the geometry messages, yes? So maybe it's this. Check it, please, because you need to have it, yes? Then here it's giving me a very important and crucial hint in the message, yes? Then if I come here to my CMAKELIST find file and I search for a function which is called find package, this is going to tell me uh, take me directly here to the find package function. Yes. Then here I have some dependencies, RossPy, message generation and standard messages. So it would be here since the error is advising me, it would be here good to add also the geometry messages package as a dependency. Yes. So this, I am not inventing this, yes? Yeah? So this hint, I get it here from the error message, yes? Then I have added here in my find package function the geometry messages package. So I'm going to try to compile here one more time. Let's see. I am uh, getting errors. I am, however, reading the error messages and uh, applying the proper instructions that these errors are advising me. Yes. Then let's see what happens now. Let's see. And voila. So now it's compiling. Yes. I am not getting an error 100%. So 
I can see here generating the JavaScript, the Python code. So now it has properly compiled and the service message, this get post service message has been properly generated. Yes. All right. Excellent. So I have been able to solve this first error with the compilation of the service message. Yes. Excellent. So let me do a very quick pause here and check the comments in case you have any questions. Thank you. Is this ROS1 or ROS2? ROS1. Semic failed. Semic failed. These classes are being recorded to watch later, asks Marcus Vinicius. Yes, Marcus. So this right now is a live class, but when it finishes, it's going to finish uh, at 8. Uh, when, when this class finishes, it's going to be uploaded as a regular video. We should add it in the fine package, says Thanasis. Yes, you are right. I have just done, done that and that fixed the problem. Very, very, very good suggestion, Thanasis. 100% build. Excellent. All right. So first uh, step covered. Yes, let's go back to work. Then now I'm going to, I have compiled this, so I'm going to try to run again this command. Let's see what happens now. So I'm going to copy paste this command and try to run now my get post server. Yes. Then let me run this and well, this executes, but with no errors. Yes. Okay. Excellent. So now I don't have any error here. Then next step, the second command here, the uh, get post client. So I'm going to come here. Control C this and paste it here and execute it. And let's see what happens. And nothing happens. Okay. So this is getting, uh, nothing is happening. Okay. I should get here the position and orientation of the robot, but nothing is happening. So the program just hangs here. Yes, by the way, my robot is moving there. <laughs> uh, let me put it back to its orientation or service call. All right, so my program is hanging here. Yes, it's not working because I should get the position and orientation of the robot, but I'm not getting it. So the program just hangs there and does nothing. Yes. so. Now, suggestions. What do you think is happening? Let me know in the comments, all of you. What is happening? What should I check now? Why this is not working? Let me know. Okay, thanks. We should add it in the find package. 100% build. Okay. Yes, these are the all messages. So right now, tell me here in the, in the comments why this is not working, why the program is not doing nothing. Thanasis, Rospa is spin, spin, spin. What do you mean with Rospy spin? We should add a Rospy spin. Where? In the client, in the server? Do you know? Yes. No. Okay. So the, the, what you are saying is correct. Yes. Rospa is pin at server server. Okay. I can see now the messages. Excellent. Yes, you are right. So basically what is happening here is that my server is dying. Yes. Then my client, let me open the client right now because we are already working with the client. So let me open the client here. So my client basically here at the very beginning, if we review this, yes, here at the very beginning, we have a line which is waiting for this service, the get post service. Yes. It's waiting that uh, this service is available, is up and running. Yes. But if I come here to my get uh, post server, yes, this program basically, as you can see here, it's initiating an instance of this class and it 
creates the service here in this, in this first line, it's creating this service, it's creating a subscriber to the odometry topic, and then it dies, yes? So my service, actually, it's not there, yes? It's not initiated. Let me show it to you. So if I run the server code here, and I do a raw service list, I can see many services, but the get post service, which is the one I am creating, is not there, yes? You can see here that the service, it's not there. We can do a grep here, raw service list. Um, let me add here, a, where do I have it? The grep here. Um, Grip of get post service. So we have nothing here, yes? The get post service is not there. Then, in order to stop my program, my service from dying, what I can do here is to add a RosPy spin. Yes, we already saw this yesterday, so we are going to apply it also today. Yes, this program is going to stop here, it's going to create an infinite loop here, which is going to prevent my service from dying. It's going to leave my service there up and running. And the same with the subscriber. Yes? Then, now, let's try to run again the server. There we go. And now my program is hanging there. Okay, good signal. Then I'm going to open another shell here. And I'm going to try to find now my service. So raw service, list, in order to get a list with all the services, and I'm going to grab, and I'm going to filter with the name of my service, which is get post service. Let's, no, poser, no, post. <laughs> this is a, <laughs> okay, so get post service. And now, here I can see that my service server is running. So now, for instance, I get check information on this service. So our service info of the get post service. And this is going to give me inf uh, information about my uh, service. So raw service info, get post service. However, here I'm getting an error. Unable to load type debug day to get post. So here it's go it's not being able to load this uh, get post message. Do you know why this, this error is happening here? Do you know why I am getting this error? Let me know in the chat right now, quickly. Do you know this error, why it's happening? In the server, we should add a ROS by spin. Yes, Thanasi, server diet probably. We have to keep server alive. Yes, that is exactly what was happening. Watch. Let me see if you have a hint about this last error. Didn't call that file. Says Santiswear. No. So the problem is it's very basic, in fact. The error here, why I am getting this problem, is because I have not sourced in this shell. This shell I have opened new. And in this shell I have not sourced my catkin workspace. So if I don't source my catkin workspace, I'm not going to be able to use the custom message, this one, which is compiled in the catkin workspace, yes? So I need to source my catkin workspace so that I'm able to use the custom message which I have just compiled, yes? So now if I source and I get the information again, I have no error, yes? And this is telling me the type which my of my service, which is this get post. Yes? Okay, so far so good. So now we have our service alive. And now we are going to try to call it. Yes? So let's try to call it with the client command, which we have right here. And I'm going to try to call it right now, here. All right, more errors. <laughs> Yeah, okay, so here we are getting another error. This one is quite big. 
many lines here, but uh, don't panic because usually when you have this error, you need to check the last parts of the error, yes? Then here it says, Invalid number of arguments. Args should be args are debug day two SRB get pose get pose object yes. All right. So here it looks like in the when when I'm trying to call. Sorry. Okay. So when I'm trying to call my server, this error is on the client side, of course. Then here, when I'm trying to call my service. So first of all, let's do one thing. Let's review line by line this client yes so here we are importing rospy here we are importing our service message the get post service message then here we have the get post client class here we have the constructor of this class which basically the first thing it does is to wait for the service to be running yes then here we create the client the connection to this service to the get post service and we define as well the type of message it uses. And then here we have a, func a function of the class which is named call server. Then here we are cre creating the request message. And here we are calling, we are performing the call to the server right here. Yes? In this call server function, this is the main. So in the main, we are just initiating a node, we create an object of this instance, and we trigger, we call this function, the call server function. Yes? Then here, in this line, is where the error is happening, because here is where we are calling, we are performing a call, a request to our service server. Then here, in the call, there is something wrong. So the, 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 the arguments I'm sending in the message, here it's saying, invalid number of arguments yes so here in the in in the in, in the request i'm getting some kind of error do you have any idea of where the the error could be here let me know in the chat please do you have any idea what do you think what this could be why why i could be uh, having this error yes this one is a little bit more tricky you need to know a, a bit about services but let me check here if you have an idea Okay, I can see here Yehor is saying we have to import service response. Well, uh, more or less, the idea is right, but it's not that. It's very close, though. Does somebody else know or have any idea? Because remember that we are calling the... the some arguments for the associated file missing. Um, no. No. So keep in mind that we are doing a request to the service. Yes. Okay. So let me let me let me uh, let me keep going by uh, by myself, so that uh, maybe I I just um, when I say you all remember suddenly. Yes. So remember when we create a service message. Yes, when we compile it, let me see if I can get back here the, the messages when we were compiling this. Here in the compilation messages. Yeah, okay, so not here. So, all right, so basically, when we create a service message, remember that a service message has two parts. Yes, it has the part above the dashes, which is the request, and the part below the dashes, which is the response. Yes, then the request, this part here, which is empty, is the one used by the client in order to call the server. Yes, in order to request something to the, to the service. And this second part, the response, is the part used by the service server in order to provide a response to whoever it's calling it. 
Yes, in this case, the service client. Then when we compile a service message, three different messages are generated. One is the general message, which is this one, the get pose. Yes, this contains all the message definition and it's used here for creating the connections to the service and for creating and defining the service uh, server, as you can see here. But two more messages are created. One is the git get res, uh, git post, sorry, get post request, like this, yes? Get post plus request. And the other one is the get post response, yes? So these two messages are generated when I compile, when I have compiled my message, yes? Then, this get pull request message is the one I need to use here when calling the server, yes? Because here I'm doing a request to the server. So I need to use the request message, yes? Then this, in this case, this re request is going to contain an, an empty message. Yes, because it's empty here. You can see it here. Yes. So when I call, when I perform a call to my, to my service, when I do a request to my servers, I need to use the get post, the request message. Yes, not the general one, but the request. Yes. So far, so good. Okay, so let's try one more time to run our client here. Sorry, I don't know what I did here. Okay, so let's run this one more time. Okay, so now the error has changed. Now I'm having another error. So here it's saying, Rush by service, service accept, accession, service, get post service, responded with an error. Okay, so now the call has been correctly done, so the request has been correctly done, but the server has responded with an error. Yes, so the error is no longer here in the client. Yes, but now the error is from the server side. Yes, the service responded with an error, and this error is request odometry object has no attribute position, yes? All right, so now we have fixed the problems here from the client side, and now the problem comes from the server side, yes? So here I have some kind of error with the message, yes? So now let's review our server code, yes? So here I, have, I, am, I am doing the import, I'm importing Rospy, I'm importing the message, I am importing also a post message and I am importing an odometry message. Yes, because I'm going to use them here in the code. Then I have my get post server class with the constructor. Inside the constructor, I am creating my service, my get post service service. Yes, so I am defining it and creating it here. Here, I'm defining a subscriber for the odometry topic. Yes, and here I'm defining a variable which is going to be of the type pose, yes? Then remember the type pose that we saw previously? Um, sorry, here, yes, here we have the pose message. All right, yes? So here I'm defining a variable which is going to be of this pose message. Then what else do I have? Here I have the callback for the service. So every time I do a call, a request from my client, this function is going to be triggered, this callback, yes? Then here, basically, I am defining the response, which is going to be of the type get post. I'm saying here, and I'm going to put something which is inside this robot post variable, and then I'm going to return this response. Then here I have the callback for the subscriber of the odometry topic. 
Then here, basically, what I'm doing is to get the odometry message and saving it into the robot pose variable, which later I'm going to put here into my the response of my service. Yes? OK, so this is basically the explanation of this code. So basically, I'm going to get the position and, and orientation from the odometry topic. Yes, from this topic, I'm going to get this information. And then when I call my service, I'm going to put this information into the response and return this response to the client. Yes? OK, then here I'm having some kind of error, as it says here in the in the message, with the odometry message, with the response. So do you have any idea of what is going on here? Let me know. OK, uh, I haven't worked with... Uh, OK, we have to import... Didn't call client... OK, we have to import service... Uh, no, I haven't worked with raw services. OK, Lucas. Yeah, if you haven't worked with raw services, maybe this is a little bit tricky. Yes, if uh, you want, if you're interested in, you can come here to the Ross basics in five days course that we have at our academy. And here you are going to learn everything about Ross basics, uh, Ross topics and messages, Ross services, also Ross actions. Yes. So here you are getting, you are going to get all the uh, required knowledge about Ross services. Yep. Then let me keep uh, reading here the comments. Initiation for the request. I don't get this comment, Sandy. Initiation for the request. Response equal a get pull response. Okay, this is a good start, Andrew. So our response, as we have just learned from the request, our response is not going to be of the type get post, but of the type get post response. Yes? So I need to import as well this message here in my server. I'm going to do it right here. And I need to use this response here. Yes. So my response uh, equally as our request was of the type get post request. Our response from the server is going to be of the type get post response. Yes. So this is a very good point. Now let, let me keep reading here in the callback. I agree with you. Yes. Okay. Okay. So you have said this get get pull response. So let's check. Let's see here. However, remember that here it's saying something about the odometry as well. Yeah. Okay. But anyways, let's try to do the call here. By the way, my server my server has shown also the same error. Yes. Then I'm going to execute the client again. And no, that hasn't fixed the error. Yes. So this is a different error. Yes. Which is, so this is correct. Yes. This has to be like this uh, before it was wrong, but I am still having this error here. Error processing request odometry object has no attribute position. Yes. So there is a problem here somewhere with the odometry message and very likely in the subscriber callback. Yes, in relation with this robot post message, something strange here is happening. Yes, do you, do you have any clue? Let, let me know here if you have any clue. Yes, no. Hmm. This is getting trickier, yes? But well, uh, ROS is always like this. I mean, uh, when working with ROS, you, 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 you have to know that you are going to deal with errors. And you need to know and, and, and think in a way always of solving these errors. Yes, so this is very important. That's why we are doing these, these trainings. Because it's very important that you learn by yourself to debug these errors and to find by yourself these errors and the reason of these errors. Yes, this is super important. And let me go back here to my work. I see some messages here. Shouldn't we check what's the output from odometry? Very good suggestion, Sandy. Shouldn't we check what's the output? That's a very good suggestion. Do we have to include enough messages in semi lists? 
No, that's not required because we are already importing it here and we, in our custom message, we are not using the enough messages. We are only using geometry messages. So we, we don't need to add it here from compilation, yes? But the suggestion about checking the odometry message is very good. So let's see one thing. Let's do one thing here. I'm going to do a print or still better. I'm going to do a rospy dot loginfo of the message, yes? This rospy loginfo is the general structure that we are going to use in order to print ROS uh, logs, yes? So this is going to, this is similar as a print, but it's the ROS print, let's say, yes? And it allows you to do some customization in the logs by the um, uh, different types of, me of messages like errors, warnings, yes? So it's super interesting. Then here we are printing a info message, a info message with the contents of this message variable. So let me see here, what do I have here? So let me come here, execute my, my client. And now I am not being able to, to, to check nothing here because the error is preventing it from uh, having so, from happening so. So what I'm going to do is one thing. I'm going to stop here the server and I'm going to run it from the server side. Yes, because this way I'm going to avoid the, this callback. Yes, and I'm going to only focus on this, uh, on, the, on the callback of the subscriber. So let me run this and here I can see the output. Yes, so now I am getting the contents of this message variable. And I can see here I have many things. I have too many things here, yes? So, here, as we can see, we can see uh, some covariances, twists, poses, headers. So we have many, many things here in the message, yes? And this, is, this doesn't make much sense, right? Because here, remember that at the beginning we have defined our robot pose variable as a pose message. And the pose message, it only contains position and orientation, yes? So here, basically, I'm trying to put a lot of information into a variable which is expecting only this, only a position and an orientation, a pose message, yes? And here, what I'm doing is basically pasting the wall odometry message which the odometry message looks like this. We can check this with the ROS message, show nav messages odometry. Here, I can get the full structure of the odometry message, which contains here, you can see a header, a pose, a covariance here, a twist, yes? But our robot pose function is only expecting a pose type message. Yes, so it's expecting a message like this. Here you have the geometry message pose. So it's only expecting this part of the message. Yes, not the whole message, but only this part of the message. So in order to fit only this part of the message, what I have to do is to come here and access only this part of the message by entering first pose the first variable here and the second variable here, the second pose, because the first one is a pose with covariance. We are not interested in a pose with, with uh, covariance, but in a pose, in a simple pose. Yes, because our message, our variable is a pose message. Then here, if I access the wall message and I enter the first pose variable and within this one, the second pose variable, like this message, pose, pose, yes? Message dot pose dot pose. So this means from the whole message, I'm going to access this pose and 
inside this post, I'm going to access this other post message. Yes, and this is going to get only this part of the message, the geometry messages post, which is the one I'm interested in for this variable. Yes, does it make sense? Then now my robot post variable is going to contain a post message. And then I'm going to fit this post message into my response. Yes, and my response is expecting a post message as well. So now everything makes sense, right? All right, so let's try one more time our server. Well, let me remove the lock line here because otherwise I'm going to have many things here. So I'm going to comment this line, the print line, and I'm going to run one more time. My server And I'm going to run one more time my client. And voila, here I have the response, which I am expecting, which contains the position of the robot and orientation of the robot. Yes. So for instance, let's do one very uh, simple trick. I'm going to reset the simulation to its start position here. All right, let me move this out of the way. Here, I'm going to place it here, for instance. And now, if I call my service, I'm going to get the following position, which is 0, 0, 0. Because, because it is in the starting point and the orientation, it's like so. Yes, this is a quaternion. So now, for instance, if I move the robot, I'm going to move it backwards. So roast a big poop, command bell, geometry messages. I'm going to move it uh, backwards by publishing a negative velocity in the linear X axis, so for instance, like so. Yeah, so this is going to start moving my robot backwards. You can see it there. Yes, I'm moving it a little bit backwards and my readings on the client, as you can see in the x-axis are in starting to decrease. Yes, so let me stop this now, the movement. And as you can see here, the X axis has gone to a very negative value because I'm moving the robot backwards. Also in the Y axis because I'm not moving the robot straight. Yes. All right, so, so far so good. We have made it more or less in time. It's five minutes past eight, but we have covered all the content. So great, let me see if you have any questions here in the chat. Uh, it should give position and orientation, but as of now, we should see what it's giving. Message post and odometry are not compatible. That's right, yeah. So Lucas, that's that was the problem. Message post and odometry are not compatible because are not the same message, basically. So it should be message post. No, it should be message post. Yes, with, with not capital post. Yes, because it's the name of the variable. Message post post. Yes, that's right, Andrew Todd. I think he, uh, he has a very clarifying message. He says, I think the ca capital P post refers to the post message, while the lowercase p post refers to the messages components. Yes, to, the, to, the, to, the, to each component, to the variable name exactly of that message. Yeah, thank, that's true. I tried it and I got errors. Thank you. No problem. You bit dumb. Yes, so very interesting comment. So comment. So here, the first, the post with capital letters, it refers to the type of message. And this actually is the name of the message. So the name, the variable name that you are going to access, how you are going to access this message. Yes. So imagine this is the same name in this case, but this post could be named different with a different uh, name. This is the same that we have here. So in our service message, we have the geometry messages post, which is the type, 
and the name here of the variable, which is robot pose. Yes? So this is the difference. The only thing is that here it's the same name, so this is a little bit confusing. Yes, I, I totally understand this. You pitch done. Okay, great. So we have done it. Awesome. So before ending, I would like you to comment here. So if you like this video, uh, we would appreciate uh, a lot your support. How you can support us? So for instance, you can uh, come to our academy, to our Robot Ignite Academy. Sorry, robot. As I've already told you, you can come here to our academy and subscribe to our academy to do uh, all the courses we have. So for instance, here we have the Rose Basics in five days course, which will uh, teach you many things related to Rose services, to the topic we have been discussing today, and many more things. But we have many, many courses with many things, mobile, here uh, for mobile manipulators, uh, courses for artificial intelligence, we have many, many things. So you can subscribe to our academy and check and do all these courses to support us. Also, what can you do? You can buy one of our World Developers t-shirts of one of our mugs, like the one I have right here, which I have been using for my coffee during this class. Yes, super awesome uh, coop. And, <laughs> and finally, also, you can give us a like in YouTube and subscribe to our channel. Yes, so like this video so that we can keep doing more classes and more trainings like this. And yeah, that's basically all. So keep pushing your learning. And I'm going to switch now to my camera to, to say to uh, all of you uh, goodbye. So thank you very much uh, for being uh, this hour with me in this training. I hope you've learned something new. You, you, I hope you like it. The, the training and, and, and you enjoyed it and yeah so basically during all the week remember we are going to keep doing these trainings this is the learn to debug ROS programs week yes so every day tomorrow uh, Thursday and Friday we are going to have at the same time classes like this one where we are going to be debugging live with you at the same time uh, ROS programs yes then yeah so anything else so just keep safe stay home yes so we are go we are providing all this content so that you can keep uh, keep your mind focused on, uh, and learning things and learning stuff but uh, this way you are going to stay home and be able to still learn ross so so yeah that's all for today i will see you tomorrow thank you very much and keep pushing your ross learning Bye-bye.